Rhino Camp Refugee Settlement stretches across Madia Kolo and Terago districts in northwestern Uganda. The settlement was established in 1980 and is now home to just over 200,000 refugees from South Sudan. The refugees and nearby host communities live in remote rural areas. They depend on natural resources for most of their daily subsistence needs, such as fuel wood for cooking energy, growing crops, and keeping livestock. But because of the high population influx, these same natural resources are now under more pressure due to increased demand by refugees and their hosts, leading to landscape degradation and depletion of tree resources. The Guidance for a Landscape Approach in Displacement Setting, or GLADS, is an initiative by C4 ECRAF and Partners to better understand and facilitate collaboration in refugee hosting landscapes, including this area of Rhino Camp Refugee Settlement. We are developing guidelines for implementing an integrated uh, landscape approach. These uh, guidelines are based on five main uh, principles, uh, which include the principle on social uh, ecological systems, the principle on multifunctionality, the principle on interdisciplinarity, participation, and sustainability. So uh, in Uganda, what we are doing is uh, we have taken Rhino Camp uh, Refugee Settlement, where we wish to, or we are going to be trialing the integrated landscape uh, approach. A shared understanding of the displacement setting landscape is a first step in dealing with complexities and the multiple functions within the landscape. To understand new social relations between host communities and other stakeholders and their use of resources. With pressure on the surrounding natural resources, refugees are now often competing with host communities to access fuel wood and water. So water issue is the biggest issue here since we arrived and up to now, like mostly it is affecting crops, that is water for farming. We are getting challenged that we dig, but sometimes the rain disappoints us and the crops will not grow. Even we are also trying to plant trees, more trees to replace, but others can force themselves now to grow. They are resilient to the sunshine but others, they can just die, definitely. The other challenge is water. Really, there is no water now. We have only one borehole we are sharing with the host. At the time, if that borehole goes get spoiling, we are going up to that learning center. Yeah, we are going to get water there. The land was full with trees, and it, it was even like bush. To see the other, the, other man, the other man or the other home of the other person, it was a problem. Nowadays, you can even see from here to there. <laughs> and this place here, as you are seeing, is stony. You can't dig anything. You can't dig anything. At least what we were, we could rely on could be agriculture. And the agriculture here, where to dig is a problem. And the sun, this climate of this place is not the best for us. Yeah, we, we are trying to at least struggle in all ways. Apart from digging, uh, we are trying to do some bricks bricks work like there across there i've done some bricks which we are waiting to sell when these partners come maybe to build schools to build we can sell 
and that will at least give us access to some animals where we can keep for survival. Yeah, that is some of the work we are trying to do. A second step is to create a common vision based on how stakeholders envision social, economic, and social sustainability within their landscape. And so one of the, uh, one of the challenges is population increase. But this part of the country also has got, I mean, it's largely a dry area. And many times there is, there is burning, bush burning. There are wildfires. And this creates quite a lot of uh, biodiversity, especially you know trees and then and grass, and that in itself exposes it to uh, to degradation. So you have got pressure because of need for energy, you know firewood, charcoal. Then you have got wildfires, and sometimes these fires are also you know created by communities for many reasons. Sometimes accidentally, but sometimes deliberate. And these two working closely. Uh, tend to put the integrity of the environment at risk and therefore we come in to ensure that um, uh, the, the stakeholders understand that there is a need for action to ensure that uh, we keep the integrity of, of this landscape. And uh, recently in March of 2022 we held a stakeholders workshop. The workshop was um, or involved um, players in the landscape these are you know humanitarian organizations that uh, are implementing interventions on different uh, in different sectors uh, sectors such as of course uh, uh, environmental management sectors such as uh, the water and the sanitation the wash uh, project protection you know, gender and all that so these together came and um, we were engaged in this uh, uh, workshop i should also mention that uh, the managers of the refugees in the settlement were also involved. That is the office of the prime minister, uh, led by the camp commandant, uh, were involved. Actions within refugee hosting landscapes means working across sectors, geographic and socioeconomic boundaries, and addressing longer term needs involving both refugees and host communities. The next is to do a pilot. We intend to pilot the principles in the landscape where um, we hope that one organization that is already present in the landscape will take lead in you know, trialing out these principles as you know, C4 ICRAF who are uh, the promoters of these uh, principles will then take note and try to improve or refine the principles for proper implementation in the refugee uh, displacement settings. Government and development agencies are working with communities for better sustainability within the area. They are working towards improved use of cooking energy and tree planting to restore tree cover and provide for firewood and fodder. I use also to 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 plant some trees at my home because when you uh, that when you plant when you cut when you cut one you plant some i used to do like, like that non-biodegradable materials are being recycled for new products and economic activities solar powered water pumps are one of the solutions tested to deal with water shortages Continuous learning on these initiatives will help to follow closely what works and what more improvements are needed in this refugee hosting area. Empowering women, men, youth, and vulnerable groups to participate helps to create more equitable outcomes. Gender mainstreaming in natural resource management is integral to the Red and Promotion of Alternative Energy Sources project in Rhino Refugee Camp Settlement. Women are being empowered to participate in decision-making and training on environmental protection, forest restoration, improved sustainable energy, and alternative livelihoods.
GLAD's initiative guides stakeholders in building context-relevant understanding, inclusive approaches, continuous learning, and outcomes towards sustainability and resilience in refugee hosting or displacement settings.